It's what you hearing. It's what you hearing. Listen. It's what you hearing. Listen. It's what you hearing. Listen. Ladies and gentlemen. X go give it to you. Fuck way for you to get it on your own. X go deliver to you. Knock knock. Open up the door to spread off with the non-stop pop out the stainless steel. Mr. Cropper here. I have been suggested a video by a Patreon uh, subscriber. Um, his name seems to be Panty Lemon or something like that. I don't, I'm not sure exactly what it is. But uh, he suggested this video. MGTOW, a Randian objectivist on MGTOW, completely misses the point you're on Brooke. From James Vaughn Maxwell. We may as well subscribe while we're here. And uh, let's begin. Urine Brook answers. Big Tao does not lead to happiness. Now, the question I have in my little hamster brain, how can someone who believes in the Ayn Rand philosophy of objectivism not understand that Big Tao is exactly objectivism? Care about yourself, you. Don't uh, succumb to societal pressures and, and all of these other things. So let's hear what he has to say. He is um, he is incredibly wrong. He might not be quite understanding what MGTOW men going their own way means, but let's listen to what he has to say. What do you think about men going their own way movement? <laughs> How does it conflict with objectivist principles? It doesn't. It is objectivist. Uh, that is, that's the irony here, isn't it? It is an objectivist principle. Now, insofar as the culture is so wrecked that you have to just go out on your own, fine. But is the culture really that wrecked? And is, is going out on your own reasonable when you're talking about leaving behind half of the human species, namely the other sex, the women? So, I think that you're dropping the context of what it means to be a human being and what happiness is uh, and what it means to be a rational animal. I think you'd have to drop all that context to say that you could go your own way from, from the females in the species and be happy. But, you can't prescribe other people's happiness. And if the culture's really that rotten, then these people need to do what they need to do for their own happiness. Are there no women that you could even teach things to? Are there no girls that you could even um, explain what's going on and try to win them over um, in a philosophical and mental way? Or are you just going to throw your hands up and say, all women are useless and I'm just going to use them or ignore them? See? I, I don't know if it's a very tenable position, but he's acting like it's the objectivist position, which is very strange. <laughs> and this guy used to be in charge of the Ayn Rand Society and everything, and he's like, well, you know, uh... Correction, the Ayn Rand Institute. Seems like there are legitimate concerns that the movement has arisen in response to the growing divide between men and women fueled by feminism and media, etc. And the government. Let's not forget that little part, Mr. Brooke. The government instituting gynocentric laws that disadvantage men. See, that's the biggest problem there. But I'm not sure to what extent the movement branches off from well-reasoned argument and precisely how it might conflict with objectivist principles. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, granted, I don't know too much about this movement, but it... But you do know about objectivism. You were the... The movement isn't a philosophy. It doesn't have philosophers. It is simply a reaction to the culture. So it doesn't have any deep principles or anything like that. It simply notices that there's a sex war going on, and it's throwing its hands up and walking away from the sex war. That's what MGTOW is. ...of the freaking board, right? So you're there. You're just not melding the two together, if I might say, Mr. Brooks. It's nuts, right? What would life be without women? Uh, well, we wouldn't be here as a species. <laughs> you know, we kind of depend on each other a little bit. Women are fantastic. Women are amazing. Yeah, they can be, sure. Um, it would be boring. Well, you got that right. Maybe not for the reason uh, you're thinking, but yeah, it would be boring, wouldn't it, guys? It would be uninteresting. <laughs> oh, I love you, buddy. 
I love you. What would life be without a spouse, a mate? Uh, 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 you know, I don't know. I guess if you're gay, you could go off and just live in a male only commune. Why? Why are you? Why are you? Why are you getting down on our gay brothers here, man? I, I, I don't quite understand. What does that have to do with MGTOW? Of course, gay guys are the original MGTOWs, if you think about it. But, uh, gay guys are the original MGTOWs. Well, that's interesting. Let me just say that whatever homosexuality is, whether it's born, you know, whether it's in your genes when you're born or not, it is not a metaphysically viable position for a species. I mean... Whatever you want to say about homosexuality, it is not a metaphysically viable method for a species. It is some kind of aberration, and it might be an advantageous aberration for the species. All right? Dawkins has talked about this possibility, and some other, maybe Weinstein, Weinstein, Eric or Brett, Somebody has talked about this idea that gay guys used to have a wife and several kids and a very nice little house and a job somewhere, and then they would go down to the bar at night and on the weekends, <coughs> and or to the public park or whatever, and go do their thing. But they used to be upstanding members of society who were sort of hidden behind a facade. Now, all of those upstanding members of society with uh, good little clean mowed lawns and nice houses have given all that up because there's no more societal pressure <coughs> to be straight. <coughs> now, why then... So, so they're saying, uh, just to get back to that point, they're, they're saying that, that gay guys are... are one of the more stable elements in society. Or were. Have been. In previous times were. And now they're not. Now they're a destabilizing element in society. They used to be stable because they had to hide and they are conscientious and they are a lot like women. Gay men are a lot like women. Alright, so this, this video is not to, meant to be about homosexuality as such. Just to point out... That it, that it's that you shouldn't just take it for granted. This this James von Maxwell here just takes homosexuality for granted at face value. It ex it exists. It occurs. Period. Done. True. It exists. It occurs. All right. I don't know. I'm having a hard time relating it to MGTOW. So let's just continue. Oh, colony, but. What would be the point in life without a romantic relationship? Listen to what he just said. What would be the point to life without a romantic relationship? You see, Mr. Brooke, Meg Tao does not just say, no, I'm not going to have relationships. They're just saying, they're not going to get married. They're not going to, they're not going to be whatever. It's going their own way, doing what men want to do with their lives. Kind of like what Ayn Rand said in her philosophy, sort of. Do, do you see the connections here? Without sex! Nobody said MGTOW is going without sex. Sir, if I, if I might correct you. They're going without marriage. And the entanglements of the government in your life with respect to the gynocentric laws that have been passed by anyone, anyone, the patriarchy. Yeah, it's hot! It's actually men like you. <laughs> and me, <laughs> who allow this shit to happen, because we're about the same age. I looked you up, okay? <laughs> uh, it's it's our fault, really, if you if you think about it. Yeah, relationships in the era of Me Too, and in the era of, you know, third wave or fourth wave, or whatever you want to call it, feminism. You see, Mr. Brooke, when we were younger, 18, 19, you know, back in the late 70s, early 80s, feminism was kind of cutesy, hey, you know, be politically correct, and... Oh, oh, you know, don't hang your calendars up, and, and, and it was all this stuff. Feminism today is nothing to do with any of that, because all that's been fixed. Pretty much everything feminism has been bitching about forever has been fixed. So now they're inventing new problems, such as Me Too. He talked to me, and I'm not attracted to him. Rape! You don't understand the newest version of feminism, sir, because you're old. 
<laughs> if you don't pay attention to this stuff, you, you think, wow, feminism, Gloria Steinem, and hey, that was great, Vernon Bras and shit. It has nothing to do with that anymore. And it hasn't for about 20 years. And then, no, but it, but relationships are hot anyway. Relationships between men and women are tough enough. But then throw the government in there. And at her whim, your life can be ruined as a man if you're involved in some kind of marriage situation. Yeah. All right. So that's a that's an interesting basis for the MGTOW movement, is that they are against the legal infiltration of the relationships between the sexes by the government. Now, it doesn't need to be the MGTOW movement. You could be an objectivist and be against that. <laughs> so what what's the essence of MGTOW then? There's something else about MGTOW than just saying the government shouldn't be involved in these things. Right? If that's all that it is, then I'm a MGTOW, because I don't think the government should be involved in these things. I, I see no reason why men shouldn't be walking away. I think it's just a cop-out. Oh, oh, it's a cop-out. What are you, Alan Alda? Who, who, who are you? Find a good woman. Where? Where would that be? Find. See, where are you going to find a good woman? There really aren't any women out there that you could even teach there aren't any women with a good sense of life. Go on the Trump train group on Facebook. There, there are women who post on there. It's not at the end of the world the way MGTOW are treating it. It is not the end of the world. And we can, we can save our culture and go on. Now, you know, look, the government is causing huge problems when they allow women to divorce men no fault and the men are at fault every single time no matter what it's a no fault divorce men have to be punished by paying child support and alimony giving up their house their car you know wait was it no fault divorce why are the men at fault right this is terrible so let's fix those laws but to to not only take the sex war for granted but to go forward with the sex war is bizarre. MGTOW is ignoring half of the human species, um, the prettier and um, daintier and, and sexier half, and um, it's not tenable. It is not a tenable position. If, if your position is we need to change the laws and the government shouldn't be having these laws, fine. Is that your position? Fine. That's not your position, though. Your position is these laws are terrible, the culture is terrible, and therefore I'm going to treat women as though they are objects and not persons. I mean, it's just a mess. The, the MGTOW position's a mess. State it in a principle for us. Give me a principled statement of what MGTOW's about. If you say it's about the sex war and the government in the, in the relationships between men and women, okay, objectivists already have that position. We say the government shouldn't be making these laws. All right? What is your position in MGTOW? All women? You're just going to disregard all women? Blanket judgment? Blanket, blanket, uh, that's sexism, right? That's racism against a sex called sexism. That's prejudging. That's bias. Against every single one of them? Even the individuals? Every single little individual human girl and woman you're judging beforehand. So, you know, it's just not a philosophically tenable position, and it seems to be quite collectivist. Female friends. Okay, where? Where would they be? Find good... See? Where would these female friends be? Really? None? You can't find any anywhere? You can't even educate any of them? You can't change anyone's mind? You can't tell anybody about your thoughts and views and communicate to them why you think this way and maybe get them to think the same as you? Nope. Female companionship. I think the only female friends that men really actually have are the ones that maybe they grew up with, you know, from kindergarten through high school and whatever. There, there's no reason for females to be your friend, especially when they're in a relationship, because they don't need you for anything. Do you understand that? They're half the human race. Yeah, so are men. So why are the laws biased against half of the human race? All right, so if the problem is the laws, then your position should be that we should change these laws. Your position shouldn't be that men should go off in their own group and women and ignore women and uh, or not ignore them. What do? Take advantage of them and, and 
oh no, no, not take advantage of them, um, just use them, treat them as objects. What? What is the position? What is the principled position of MGTOW? I'm having my trouble putting, I'm having trouble putting my finger on it. All I've got really is uh, that they're upset about the way the culture is today. Well, so are objectivists. Think about it that way. If the laws were biased against, it wasn't that what feminism was born. You can't just give up on them. But you see, now that it's affecting men, it's perfectly fine, because something 400 years ago wasn't to their liking <laughs> in looking through today's lens. It's just silly. Yeah, it is. So, the idea of criticizing, you know, uh, the feminist movement when it's appropriate. When is it ever appropriate to criticize whammons, Mr. Brook? In today's day and age, never. Because women can do no wrong. They are angelic, sent from on high by... Well, do you just take today's cultural position for granted? Is that just your, your, the base from which you operate? <clears throat> well, objectivists take exception to today's cultural position. We believe that it should be changed. We don't think that there should be a war between the sexes. And we don't think there should be a class war between the upper and lower classes. We want to change this stuff. You apparently want to change it too or you think it should be changed, but instead of worrying about changing it, or how to change it, or why to change it, and what way to change it, you're just gonna do what? What is the MGTOW position? Himself, because they're perfect. It should be done. Uh, criticizing them, the, 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 I don't know, men, when they, uh, you know, act ridiculously. Yes, yes, because men are just evil, or... or uh, yeah. Act a chauvinist in a new rational way. Again, you're thinking 1970s. Male chauvinist pigs, Ms. Magazine, and all that bullshit. Feminism is not that anymore. As a matter of fact, it's quite socialist. You grew up as a socialist, and then you read Ayn Rand. And then you said, you know what? That socialism shit, I don't like that anymore. <laughs> you see what you're saying? Is legitimate. But you have to be objective, and you have to criticize what's deserves criticizing. You can't criticize all women. MGTOW is not. What we're saying is the government has changed the laws to the point that any woman at any time can literally ruin your life if you're engaged with them, some kind of relationship or marriage or whatever. You don't even have to be. You could be just walking down the street or through the subway like that one guy. He was 17 feet away from the woman and she claimed he sexually assaulted her. Dude, you gotta wake up, man. And you can't say, because it's hard to date women, I'm just going to go off and never date again. That's not what MGTOW is saying at all. Uh, it's hard. So you have to figure it out. You have to figure out where better women are and, and, and what you're looking for in a woman. And what you're looking for in a woman, right. Uh, you do realize, Mr. Brooke, you're not that old. That Women have always had to say in that. <laughs> Come on, man. Really? Dude, give up your man card, buddy. What kind of relationship you want? And what kind of relationship I want? I kind of missed none. his argument there. What was he saying? That old. Uh, women have always had the same. <laughs> Come on, man. Women have always had the same what? Better women on and, and, and what you're looking Yeah, that's what I said. Go, there's no there's no woman out there. There's not a single girl anywhere that... that uh, whatever, likes Trump or whatever, whatever your thing is, or dislikes uh, feminists, yeah, there are definitely women out there who drive pickup trucks, think feminism is stupid, shoot guns, drink beer. These women are out there, They're, you know, and there are polite women who don't drink or smoke, but they believe that, uh, that the man is the bigger, stronger of the two sexes. There are women who still have their head on straight about this. Not 100% of women are insane. It is a collectivist position to believe that 100% of women are insane. Now, maybe they don't believe that, but he seems to. He says, where am I going to find these good women? In a woman, what you're looking for in a woman, right? Uh, you do realize, Mr. Brooke, you're not that old. Uh, women have always had the say in that. <laughs> Come on, man, really? What? Women have always had the same what? Now, is this just because his argument's falling apart and he doesn't know what to say? Is that why he's mumbling like that? Dude, give up your man card, buddy. What kind of relationship you want? And what kind of relationship I want? I want none. Men going their own way. You want no relationship at all, so you're not going to have sex with them? We're not giving up sex. Okay, so you do want some kind of relationship with them. No relationship at all, just sexual? 
Well, is that going to be satisfying to you? Not, not according to objectivism, it's not. Not according to philosophy of living as a rational animal. You're just t you're cutting off the rational part. You're just living as an animal, saying just sex. I'm just going to use women for sex. I'm not going to have relationships with them because you can't find good women anywhere, right? Because he says, where are you going to find these good women? See, if they want to have a relationship. Men go. They don't. They don't. So what? what, what, what? <laughs> Isn't that objective? <laughs> for how long and how deep? And no. you have to figure all these things out. That's not objective. Um, but I wouldn't run away from a feminist again. Mr. Brooke, you are looking at feminism through the lens of time. You're seeing the ladies in the 70s and 80s that were fighting for things that actually kind of made sense. Today's feminism has nothing to do. You might as well just call... Ayn Rand did not like feminists. Clear back in the 60s and 70s, she said the idea that there should be a sex war is bizarre and, and evil and destructive. She said women control the wealth of the country, which is, that was true at the time, and it's still true today. Um, as, and she she always took exception to feminism, even in the 60s and 70s. So to give you some idea of whether or not feminism used to be a good thing and has gone out of control, um, Ayn Rand thought that it was always a collectivist um, class war type, Marxist class war type thing, but a sex war. Ayn Rand always saw right through it. There was never anything good about it. Something else, really. Uh, you know, if I was looking for a woman, I would definitely... Uh, Silicon Valley would be part of one of the places I would look for, and I'm sure a lot of them are feminist and politically correct and so on. Okay, well, educate them. Did you hear what he just said? Educate them. Ed yeah, that's what I've been saying the whole time. Find a girl that you like and tell her the stuff that you think is true, and if it doesn't work, go find another one. Keep trying a radical feminist who for, oh, their entire lives have been brainwashed into thinking men's is evil and girls is good. And oh, okay, so they're all brainwashed. So you're just going to collectively judge every single woman because of our culture today. Now, you see, this is an emotional reaction to the culture today. Now, I the culture today is garbage. I, I recently lost a job because I'm a white, straight male. There was a white straight male who didn't want me to be fired, and there was a, a black female from Haiti, and a, a gay guy, and they wanted me to be fired. And the white straight male said, everybody just forget everything that's happened, don't worry about it, don't talk about it anymore, leave it alone, it, nobody meant any harm by it, no damage was done, let's just forget about it. That's what the straight white guy said to, to the, everybody involved. But the black woman from Haiti and the gay guy wanted me fired, and I got fired. Now, I'm pretty mad about this society and this culture. I also lost a job a few years ago during the Trump, during the Trump um, campaign, during the Trump election, because of things I said. I'm sure, I, I mean, they didn't say so much in so many words, but I'm sure it was because of the things that I said about Trump and politics. So you have to keep, and now other people were allowed to say things, but not me, right? People could say Trump was stupid and stuff like that, but I couldn't say anything. So there's two jobs I've lost in a few years um, to this culture of insanity. Um, but I still i am not going to go the MGTOW way and judge every single woman just because the culture is messed up today. I'm not going to become a collectivist just you know, to fight the collectivism in the culture. That's bizarre. So, what is the philosophical position of MGTOW? It does it have a philosophical position, or is it simply reactionary to the culture of the day? Government hates women, and it's a patriot. Give that a shot. Teach her that she's wrong. Teach her that she's wrong. Oh my God, this guy is absolutely amazingly wrong. Well, what are you going to do if you can't find a woman and explain your position to her? I mean, you're admitting that you can't do that? Or you just blanket judge every woman before you even meet them that they can't think for themselves? Wrong about things, isn't he? I'll put all the links below. James Maxwell, thank you for listening. Now, just as a final proof, or just as a... Uh, 
as a demonstration of what's going on here. How many women are watching this video? If you're a female and you watched all the way to the end here, leave a comment down below and just say, uh, just say I'm a female and I can think for myself or something like that. Because Mig MGTOW doesn't believe females can think for themselves. They believe that the culture has ruined the collective unit that we call females. And I don't believe in collectivism. I'm not a collectivist. All right. Females, please leave a, a, a comment below. And uh, hell, if you're a male, you're welcome to leave a comment below as well. Please patronize me. Five, ten bucks a month. Uh, help me build up a stream so I don't feel guilty when I sit around making these videos that are ostensibly not saving the world, but hell, maybe they are. Maybe these videos will do some good, so uh, I feel guilty when I'm doing them, and I, I ought to be out earning money and doing something that will uh, make my wife and child's future more secure and my own future more secure. So if you want these videos to make my future more secure then please vote with a 5 or $10 bill every month at Patreon and support me making these videos. Thank you, Mr. Cropper out.